almost there. Professor Simon will give us something to eat. Thank goodness we made it. The sun's going down. Mmm, these berries look delicious. Who is it? Hello, my name's Brian Basco. I need to speak with Professor Simon. The man who knows does not speak. What? Excuse me, are you James Simon? Please, listen. I have a very important message for you. Not interested. Hey! I think I forgot to mention, you have to say a password before I let you in. A password? Of course you didn't say anything. Let's see. What could that darn password be? Hey, quit eating those berries. They could be poisonous. Hey, leave that alone. And tell me the password once and for all. You see, Professor Simon will say who knows what about the man who knows. And you have to answer him. Yes, you must tell him. Oh dear, I'm feeling dizzy. I knew those berries would make you feel sick. Come on, just make a bit of an effort to remember the password and you'll be able to recover inside the professor's house. I believe it was something like... Oh no, I'm sorry. I can't remember. It's all right, calm down. When we were coming up here, I saw a shelter by a lake. We'll go up there and I'm sure you'll remember that password after a bit of rest. Come on, I'll help you. Joshua, the fire is already lit. You rest and try to get over this as fast as possible. You've got to remember that darn password. Maybe you should try to do something about this. Who knows how long it'll take Joshua to recover. If I insist, maybe Professor Simon will let me into his house. By the way, when we were walking down to the shelter, we saw a pretty strange guy. He was wearing this humongous fur coat and taking pictures or something. I'll take it, but I hope I don't have to use it on anyone. In that condition, it may not cut anyone, but it'll give them a nasty infection. Okay, if there's any oil inside, I might be able to use it. it. Looks like it's not full, but there's a little bit inside. I'll take it. I'll take one piece of firewood. Oh, it weighs so much I can't imagine taking them all. Well, I guess it's for the best. I'll attempt to go find help to get us out of this crazy mess. I'll go see if I can find the guy I saw coming toward here. Hello there, my friend. Hello, my name is Brian. Wazowski. Ben Wazowski. Pleased to meet you, Ben. I couldn't stop to say hi before because I had to take my friend to that shelter down there. Yeah, I saw you too. What? Uh, so you needed to warm up a bit and you went overboard on the whiskey, huh? <laughs> uh, no, no, not at all. He was fine until he ate some berries from a shrub. Uh, some big red juicy berries uh, uh, that look like cherries? Yeah, those are the ones. Don't say another word. I bet. He's dizzy, has muscle aches, a hallucination, short-term memory loss. Exactly. How did you know? I've been observing the behavior of bears for years, and I see how they react when they ingest those berries, which they love, by the way. <laughs> I myself have tried them on occasion for experimental purposes. The, the effects take several days to pass, unless... Unless what? Salmon. Salmon? Yes, salmon. Eating salmon practically counteracts all the effects of those berries. I myself have experienced it. Well, that's good news. So I just have to get my friend to eat some salmon and it'll go back to normal? Uh, yep, that's it. Uh, well, but there's a little detail you have to know. What? Uh, the salmon will only work if he eats it raw. 
In my earliest experiments, I tried cooking one over a fire with some W ketchup as a condiment and freedom fries as a side dish, but it was no good. Tasted fantastic, but it wouldn't counteract the effects of those berries. At first, I thought there was some difference between humans and bears' digestive systems, but then I got the idea to eat it raw, like a bear. And what happened? Uh, it was completely different. It tasted much better on the grill. I meant about the effect of the berries. Oh, yeah. They completely disappeared. Listen, Ben. Well, what's on your mind? Do you know Professor Simon? The guy in the big house up there? Uh, not very well. I've seen him hiking around from time to time, and once in a while I walk by his house, but we haven't uh, chit-chatted much. I think he's kind of a loner. By the way, you wouldn't happen to know the password to get into Professor Simon's house, would you? Password? What I usually say is... Hey, ciao! I've come for my weekly package! Then I go in, grab the package of bear food the cook makes me, and hasta la vista! You may be asking yourself now, sure, it's for the bears and not for good old Ben himself? Well, it is. It's for the bears, and I can't believe you think that of me. Could you tell me if there's more than one door leading into his house? I can assure you it's not true. The wall goes around the perimeter of the house, and the only gate is the one by the intercom. I'm telling you, I went all the way around it with a mad bear in hot pursuit behind me. Do you think they'd open up if I pretended I was you? Since there's a camera as well as the intercom, and it wouldn't be good enough just to say you're me, I get the idea you're asking yourself. Will Ben lend me his bear suit so I can pass for him? Well, let me make things clear. The bear suit is sacred, and I don't lend it to anyone for anything in the world. I think I can sneak into the house if I hide while you talk on the intercom. You had a stroke of bad luck. I only get in thanks to the cook, but I saw him heading for Sicily this morning, like he always does on his day off. And he won't be back until at least tomorrow morning. Uh, getting back to what I was saying... Yes. Impressive costume. Well, it isn't exactly a costume. It's actually a bear suit, but I, I haven't finished it. Those claws on that backpack look pretty realistic. Ah, but the claws are the most important part of the bear. They are used for defense and for fishing salmon during the season when they swim upstream. Well, that's what my book says anyway. I want to prove a revolutionary theory, though. What is that theory, you ask? Well, sorry, but I can't tell you. You look like a nice guy, but who knows if you'll go sell the story to National Geographic afterward. Nope, my friend, I'm sorry, but I can't. Could I borrow a fishing pole? I could if I had one. But the last time I went fishing, I accidentally pricked a cub in his private parts with a fish hook. I don't think it did him much harm, but boy, was he mad. He chased after me till he wore out. We ran in circles for hours around Professor Simon's house. When I got back to the river, my fishing pole was gone. <sighs> I never saw it again. I hope you can prove your theory as soon as possible. Well, I'm on the verge. Everyone believes they have scratched their backs against trees because they itch. But it isn't true. Look, we humans didn't discover the properties of birch sap until 20 years ago, and they've known for centuries. And that's as far as I can read. What really shocks me is your bear costume. There you go again. What will you do when you finish making the bear suit? Uh, what am I gonna do? Infiltrate the group and demonstrate my theory about... No, I better not tell you. <laughs> anyway, I'll be joining the Denner Bears, and they'll think I'm one of them. 
Will the suit be good enough, you're asking? Oh, no. But I can pass it off if I put some Bear Essence perfume on first. I make it myself. Bear Essence? Don't tell me you liquefy bears to make perfume. No, pal. I make the essences using bear droppings. I won't be so rude as to explain all of their bodily fluids, hairs, and the solid waste they produce. But I will tell you, I need gloves and my hockey mask to gather it all up. How many kinds of bear essences do you have? I have essences of newborn cub, she-bear in heat, Republican bear, ferocious bear, Buddhist bear, myopic bear, honey-loving bear, papa bear, the bear by the strawberry tree, an ant-eating bear, a bear with a gastric di- Oh no, sorry, I drank that one on accident. Intellectual bear? And who knows how many more? More than the essences? What I like is your costume. But will you never learn to call my suit by its proper name? I have nothing against bears, Ben, but your lecture about them was uh, a little over my head. No, man, don't you worry. We all have our little flaws. Ah, uh, forget it. Get back to your work. Okie dokie, you know where to find me. If you don't see me around here, it's because I'm at home. You'll recognize the house. It's a typical ranger's cabin raised several yards off the ground. Come by whenever you want. That Thanks, Ben. See you around. Okay. What an unusual plant. I wonder what it's called. I can't take the whole plant. I'd have to uproot it and kill it. But I will take one leaf. I'll take it to my pal Rutger. He'll think it's way cool. Yeah, I'll take a look over there. Wow, I've never seen a completely frozen river before. I'll try not to walk across it just in case the ice breaks. I'll go take a look. I'll just take a quick glance inside. It'd be better to leave the trap door open. Well, so this is what Wazowski's hidden den is like. Let's see what we can find around here. Those look like perfume bottles. Newborn bear essence. Pheromones of she-bear in heat, Republican bear extract. They appear to be the essences that Wazowski was talking about. Now, don't take this the wrong way, but I bet some she-bear in heat pheromones could come in handy. I'll have to make sure not to spill a single solitary drop. Smelling like that goop with wild bears roaming around is the last thing I need. I don't know. It might be a little heavy. And I'm starting to get tired of hauling junk all over the place. Though, on the other hand, this is one of those pieces of junk that could save my day at some point. Anyway, by lifting a bunch of junk like this, <laughs> I won't need to join a gym. Wow, man. As far as I can see, the fuel gauge is at zero. Well, I'll grab the thing. After all that effort to get it into my pocket... Sure. I bet I can use it somewhere. It's as good as new. I'll try not to wreck it. I don't think it'd be of any use. But what the heck? This isn't the first time I take something without knowing what I want it for. It'll be easier to carry if I roll it up. I have no idea how to play, but why not try? Uh, 
Ugh, Wazowski hasn't tuned this thing for years. Okay, I could try to see what happens. Maybe if I turn these screws... Cool. Now it sounds much better. Okay, let's go on out. I don't know. I think the cold temperatures have broken it. But let's try anyway. Hey, it does work. This kind of thing always seems to prove handy. I'll take it. In the end, it's the simple things in life that turn out to be the most useful. I'm gonna go check on Joshua. He is like totally out of it. I'll have to find some way to make him come too. Maybe a good slap would do the trick. Trantor's been destroyed by a huge meteor! No! Say it isn't true! Nothing's happened to Trantor. You just need to eat some raw salmon to remember the password. Raw salmon? A lunatic wouldn't eat that. There's no way to convince you? No, Brian. I am a civilized person. A decent Trato Japanese American. And I don't eat raw animals. You think I'm some sort of polar bear? Japanese? So you do have some Japanese blood in you? Of course. What do you think? My ancestors were samurais. I believe my grandpa's the one who came to the States. But I haven't really studied the family tree. Well, if you're Japanese, whatever, you must love sushi, right? Oh, hi, Brian Sunny. Mackerel, tuna, halibut, octopus. It's almost the only gourmet food I enjoy, beside desserts. What about salmon? Do you dig salmon sushi? Well, if there's nothing else swimming around, yeah, I'll eat it with pleasure. By the way, did I mention I'm dying of starvation? I'll get you a salmon, or my name's not Brian. Don't you worry, you'll be getting ready for the most delicious plate of sushi you've ever had in a jiffy. Oh dear Brian, we geniuses don't cook. If nobody's around to make our meals, we just order out for pizza or bite our nails. But under no circumstances would we waste any time on something as mundane as cooking. Well, he was hard to convince, but this is better than nothing. I have no choice but to look for someone who will teach me to make salmon sushi. Okay. Too bad. It's empty. This is gonna leave a gross aftertaste, but oh well. Yuck! Talk about needing a mint. 
It isn't full, but that should do. I bet the chainsaw won't run on just gasoline alone. just approximate the amount of oil. Maybe it's my lucky day. Well, now my little mixture is all ready. Well, let's hope I made the mixture with the right proportions. Yes, it works, but I better turn it off for the time being. I don't see why I should wreck it. I don't see why I should wreck it. It's the mascot of a pizzeria. How appropriate for this region. I always like pickups but they're prettier in just one color. Hmm, I don't know what that might result in. It's topped off with fuel, ready to roll. I don't see why I should wreck it. I doubt that'd work. I don't see why I should wreck it. That idea is not good. No, for now, I don't need any more gas. Darn, he seems to I'll have to shake him up a bit. Joshua, wake up! No, mommy! Please let me sleep five more minutes, please! I was dreaming I was a super friend, and I was eating berries in the mountains of Alaska with Dorothy and Toto. It was so beautiful. You have to remember that password, Joshua. But I already told you the password. And I know it was the right one, because I am said so. You have to let me in. Plus, that treehouse is mine. And if you put your dirty mitts on my Space 1999 trading cards, you will feel my red. Man, your zipper's open. I can see your Woody. Daddy, no. I didn't kill little Woody. I swear. He flew into the path of my self-propelled intergalactic rocket on purpose. To break it! That woodpecker hated me, Daddy. The other day, he started pecking away while I tried to study for my math test. Now he screwed up my science project. I hope he's happy now, cause he did. I'm going to flunk science for the first time in kindergarten. Trantor's been destroyed by a huge meteor. No! Say it isn't true! Sorry, Joshua. Actually, the government expropriated it, and... Oh, the cruelty, Brian! That is not funny. Okay, so the truth is that Trantor was chosen worst dressed planet of the millennium, but I didn't know how to tell you. But where do those two-bit critics get their taste? For your information, 
Trapped on who do you think designed Pony M's outfits anyway? And what about the Power Rangers? The human species would still be wearing loincloths if it weren't for Trantorian designers, I'm telling ya! Sorry for freaking you out, but I needed you to pay it. Now listen, I need you to remember that password. The one Alpha gave you to get into... Well, how would I know? Hey, isn't it a bit chilly here for a tropical island? What do you mean, tropical? What's the matter with you, Brian? You're acting like you have amnesia! Like I was saying, you need to eat some raw salmon to remember the password. Yuck! No wonder I can't remember! You have to do it! It's completely necessary! Well, guess what? I'm not gonna! Not even with some W ketchup and freedom fries? Yuck! I can't stand ketchup! What I really like doesn't go with salmon. I'm more of a fiend for chocolate, shakes, vanilla ice cream, donuts, peanut butter, apple pie, maple syrup, caramel smoothies. Well, have it your way, Joshua. See ya. Okay. I knew you'd listen to reason in the end. It's a handmade wooden bench. Looks like it's made of plastic. Good evening, Mr. Moose. Hey, I just felt like talking to someone, so here I am, trying to express my feelings to a plastic moose as the snow nips at my toes. So, what is your opinion? No, the chainsaw isn't exactly a tool for detail work. I'd probably just thrash the chainsaw, and then I couldn't use it anymore. I don't see why I should wreck it. I don't see the reason for doing that. One of these days, he's kind of a nut. Listen, Ben. What's on your mind? You wouldn't happen to know how to make sushi, would you? Well, as you guessed, I, I don't know how. And go figure, because I've been to Japan a couple of times, but I know nothing beyond traditional cooking. When steak with mashed potatoes, I have eyes for nothing more. Do you know anyone in this area who knows how to make it? If anyone would know about that, it's Professor Simon's cook. I think he's from China, somewhere around there. But today, here's his day off, so I doubt you'll find him around. Well, then there's Archibald, but if I were you, I wouldn't want to meet him. Archibald? Who's that? Some say he's either Bigfoot, a serial killer, a 200-pound gremlin, or a war criminal. People say the darndest things. Satch. The pizza guy from Sicily says he saw him a short while back. He was coming to deliver some pizzas to me when he heard a noise in the back of his pickup. When he got out, 
he saw a running shadow and chased it until he lost sight of it. When he returned to the pickup, they'd stolen the pizzas and opened up the engine. He couldn't get the pickup started, so he had to leave it around here somewhere. He's sure it was Archibald, but actually it could have been anybody. Do you know what Archibald looks like? The last thing I heard is he's six foot seven, has a flat head, green skin, and a body full of scars. Do you have any idea how I can find him? <laughs> no, pal. You don't find Archibald. He finds you. You may be asking yourself, why is Ben saying that? Well, because that's what happened to me. Not once, but twice. So, you say you've seen Archibald? No, amigo. I didn't tell you I had seen him, but that I'd been with him. As for seeing him the way I see you now, never. What happened the first time you met Archibald? The first time? Oh yeah, it was Christmas Eve. I picked up my guitar, went out on the balcony, sipped down a mug of beer, and started singing. A Christmas Carol. I hadn't finished the first bar when I felt a sharp object in my back, as a whispering voice told me. John Lennon sang Christmas carols much better than you, and look where he ended up. Your end may be much more cool and imaginative. I stopped playing and asked, You're Archibald, aren't you? But there was nobody there. What happened the second time he found you? I was sitting here having a beer when I recognized his voice. I'm going to give you some emergency anesthesia. If you move, I'll leave you dumber than you are now. I felt something hit my head, and I fell to the floor. When I woke up, I saw I'd been blindfolded. Well, actually, I didn't see it, but you get my drift. I said, where am I? Who are you? What do you want from me? I thought my kidnapper was a competing bear scientist, so I yelled. You'll never get me to tell you my theory, no matter how hard you torture me. Uh, but that wasn't the deal. He said his name was Archibald, and that he was a chef. He just invented a tarantula venom salsa, and he wanted to experiment with me to see if the venom was still poisonous after being boiled. Thank goodness it wasn't. But it was quite a laxative. You have no clue about where his house is? Well, no. I've scoured the area many times, but I can't ever seem to find it. I'm starting to suspect he lives in a hole, like a bunny rabbit. Well, let's stop talking about Archibald for now. As you wish, but don't ever call him Archie. He gets mad with rage. Ah, uh, forget it. Get back to your work. Okay. Man, that's a great idea. If I play the right song, maybe I can get that Archibald guy to show up. I better go outside so he can hear me all right. Here we go. Jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle all the way. Oh, what fun is it to ride on a one-horse open sleigh? Jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle all the way. Oh, what fun is it to ride on a one-horse open sleigh? Hey, you! Darn! Wait for me. That's too bad. His nose didn't even bleed. Can you tell me why you just tried to do me bodily harm? Ah, uh, forget it. I don't feel like arguing. You must be Archibald from what I've heard. Well, you must be a moron. And from what I've heard, a worse guitar player than your father. So, how is it you met my father? From hearing him play on that very balcony there. Or isn't your pop that bird brain with the bears? No, I, I believe you're mistaken. Wazowski's not my dad. I'd swear you guys were family. I find it hard to believe backward evolution is widespread among humans. Hey, he doesn't look like... 
the same ape-like expression on your face, the same lack of musical knowledge and bad taste from the look of your clothing. No, there are just too many coincidences. Listen, Archibald, I'm warning you that- All right then, let's look at it from a more entertaining perspective. I know a game called Give Me One Reason Why You Shouldn't Die at This Very Moment. You'd like it. The end's supposed to be a killer. I need you to tell me how to make sushi. I don't have to explain anything to you. Did you explain to me about the expired syrup they gave you when you were born? I have money. If you help me out, I'll pay whatever you want. Well, obviously, there had to be something good about you. But I'm warning you, I don't come cheap. And I don't work for scraps. You charge that much for your services? Price is a relative concept, kid. It depends who asks me, what they want, when they need it, and more than anything, what side of the bed I woke up on. Are you familiar with making salmon sushi? Does the Pope pray? Kid, you stand before the former chef of Japan's Imperial Palace. The man who introduced the West to sushi, tempura, and sake. And if that's the dish you want, it won't cost you a cent. Oh, thanks a lot. Yeah, because I can refuse to make it for you. I only work my cooking magic when I'm given each and every one of the proper ingredients. And I'm missing some essentials for sushi. What ingredients go in sushi? I don't see why I should tell you, but okay. It contains rice, nori algae, soy sauce, wasabi, ginger, a touch of sugar, a dash of salt, and in this case, salmon. Which ingredients are you missing? The salmon to start with, the nori, the wasabi, no, I guess I could achieve a similar effect if I mix Dijon mustard with apple vinegar and some mint toothpaste. I think I have some soy sauce and ginger around here, so that would be it. Well, I don't have any chopsticks either, or a bamboo mat for rolling up the maki sushi. If we were to get all of the ingredients, how much would you charge me to make one dish of sushi? That depends, kid. How much have you got? Don't leave, there's more to come. God, who rebooted this kid? I think I've got about a thousand bucks. Is 50 okay? No, 1,000 will do for me. It's a done deal, kid. You get the salmon, the mat for rolling up the sushi, the chopsticks and the algae, and I'll take care of the rest. Are you ready? My questions are somewhat personal. Well, in that case, we could start playing our old game again. But backward. Every time you open your mouth, you give me another reason to feel s considering the vegetative state of your brain. Wazowski says you hit him, blindfolded him, and gave him tarantula venom. Wazowski is an imbecile. He was so drunk he fell down the stairs in his own house, so I threw him over my shoulder and dragged him back up. I put a wet rag on his forehead and eyes to lower his fever, but the guy started to get delirious and spewed a bunch of nonsense about his theory on bears. Then I made him a nice broth out of terra brachula, a harmless brachiopod, and left him sleeping. The rest is a product of his moronic imagination. Do you know Wazowski's theory about why bears scratch themselves? I'm not just familiar with it. The theory is actually mine. I'm the one who discovered that female bears in heat scratch birch trees to get the sap out. It's as sweet as honey and can be used to make syrup. I noticed that right afterward, they rub their back against the tree to get all covered in it. Then a bear comes along, smells her back, gets on top of her to enjoy the delicacy and... And well, nature takes care of the rest.
But I don't care about Wazowski stealing the theory from me. I'm used to that kind of thing. Plus, the poor devil has to get some kind of enjoyment. Are you barefoot because you don't own any shoes? Or did you make some sort of vow? Is that what you think? Well then, let's just say I made a promise never to reveal why I go barefoot. Go figure that one out, kid. It looks like your shower isn't working right. Or your washing machine, for that matter. You're calling me a pig, aren't you? Well, get over it. I smell like myself, like a human being. In other words, what I'm supposed to smell like. If I'm not mistaken, you smell like body milk, shaving mousse, aloe vera gel, conditioner, artificial aromas B303, F507, and H452, along with any perfume made from camel sweat that happens to be in fashion. Conclusion, the only dirty pig here is you, and you spent a fortune to get that way on top of it. I think we should talk about more important things, Archibald. I shudder to think what type of things are important to you. Do you know Professor Simon? The best thing I can say about him is, I hardly know him. He doesn't bother me with nonsense, and he doesn't make a bunch of noise with a guitar. The guy is nice and quiet in his mansion. Doesn't bug anyone or show his face. Now that I think about it, I kinda like him. You have to help me. My friend got sick from some wild berries, and you're the only one who can whip up the antidote. You got the wrong idea about me, mister. Even though I'm smarter than most of them, I'm not a doctor. I've heard you're a whiz in the kitchen. Mister, I am much, much more than that. Where'd you learn to cook? By cooking. How else do you think people learn? But of course, I studied at the finest schools in Paris with the greatest chefs. All I can say is, though, they learn more from me than me from them. You must have worked in the finest restaurants, I'm sure. Yes, all the ones they won't let the likes of you into. But I grew tired of half-baked cooks stealing my recipes and using them to get the best reviews in the Guide Michelin. The truth is, looking at you here, it's hard to picture you in a white apron and a chef's hat. Hey kid, I can easily picture you in a shroud lying in your coffin. Anyway, getting back to what I was saying... Good lord, what an annoying person. If I'd known, I would have acted like- Thanks, Archibald. I'll be seeing ya. That's a true threat, coming from you. But, how will I find you? Just whistle, if you know how. But you'd Thanks. better not bother me without a good reason. Hmm, this feels like one of those old movies. If I whistle, he'll come running. What a nut! Great, the important thing is to focus on getting the ingredients this guy needs to make the sushi for me. Hmm. It's occurred to me that... Yes, I bet I can use that Chinese sign I grabbed at Wazowski's as a makeshift mat. What a relief. One less thing. And... This leaf I picked up for Rucker could be used as nori. It's always nice to know you've got half the things you need without moving a finger. Yeah, I think I've earned it. It isn't full, but there's quite a bit left. Luckily, it's closed tight and didn't break when that nutcase threw it at me. Great idea! I'll make a hole in the ice. Let's get to work.
perfect. Euclid couldn't have drawn a better circle. Dude! Whew! I thought he was coming after me. Looks like he just wanted to use the hole to fish in, though. I'll have to come up with a way to shoo him off. Listen, Ben. Well, what's on your mind? Impressive costume. Well, it isn't exactly a costume. It's actually a bear suit, but I, I haven't finished it. Well, like I was saying, a bear costume. I don't like you calling it that. Makes it sound like it's not serious. Costume sounds like it's for a party, and these are my work clothes. Actually, it has more in common with a camouflaged uniform, more than a mere bear suit. Yeah, now that you mention it, you're right. But the only bears with glasses that I can remember were in a fairy tale book. No sorry, I wear them because I'm as blind as a bat. Plus, the bear suit is incomplete. I asked the guy from the pizzeria in Sicily, the closest city to here, to order it from the same website he bought his moose suit at, but they sent it without the head. And so I asked myself, what is a bear without a head? I don't know, the extra part of a hunting trophy? Uh, no, my friend, a bear suit is the same as a certain death. If I make my way into the pack looking like this, the bears will say, That one there, he isn't one of us. And whammy, they'll pounce on me, rip my head off with a paws. So I have to postpone my plans until they send me the missing head. So, how did you get into bears? I used to play ice hockey on a pro team. You know, we go on a tour throughout Asia every summer. But one day, after a big fight, that left me in a daze. I got sick of it all. I escaped from the hospital, went home, started surfing channels, and without realizing it, I watched a whole movie about a bear that danced with bananas on its head. Afterward, they put on a French movie about an orphan bear. I cried my eyes out. Then, I took a walk to get some fresh air, and I ran right into a billboard that showed a polar bear enjoying a soft drink. I got thirsty, so I tried to go into a coffee shop, but some doormen came out in these uh, strange leather outfits, and they said, Out of here, man. This place is for bears only. What a world, huh? Two hours later, I grabbed my suitcases, hopped on a plane, and came to Alaska in search of my destiny. About what you said regarding your costume. It's a bear suit, Brian. A bear suit. What will you do when you finish making the bear suit? Uh, what am I going to do? Infiltrate the group and demonstrate my theory about... <laughs> no, I better not tell you. <laughs> Anyway, I'll be joining the Denna Bears, and they'll think I... Will the suit be good enough, you're asking? Oh, no. But I can pass... More than the essences, what I like is your costume. But will you never learn to call my suit by its proper name? Those claws on that backpack look pretty realistic. Ah, but the claws are the most important part of the bear. They are used for defense and for fishing salmon during the season when they swim upstream. Well, 
That's what my book says anyway. I want to prove a revolutionary theory, though. What is that theory, you ask? Well, sorry, but I can't tell you. You look like a nice guy, but who knows if you'll go sell the story to National Geographic afterward. Nope, my friend, I'm sorry, but I can't. What really shocks me... There you go. I have nothing against bear... No, man. Ah, uh, forget it. Get back to your work. Okay. Hey, that might be a good idea. I know a guy who could be interested in that head. It's not exactly a bear head, but anyway. Huh. Now that I think of it, if I took off the antlers, it would look pretty much the same, wouldn't it? Okay, let's flex that muscle. Much better, yeah. That won't do any good. Hmm, I don't know. Okay, let's check out the results. It's a little stinky, but now it looks a lot more like the head of a polar bear. A bear head would have been cooler, but I bet this will come in handy. Yeah, great idea. The knife's not very sharp, but I could use it to cut a lengthwise strip which could then be lifted like a visor. That way, whoever puts the head on can see where they're walking. Done. Hope it works. All right, I'll leave it on top of his backpack to give him a surprise. There we go. Ben! Uh, what's up, amigo? <laughs> surprise, my friend. Look what you've got in your backpack. The head of a bear? Very well done, but what variety of polar bears does that head belong to? I can't seem to place it. Well, it's actually from a moose. The a moose polar bear? Not familiar with that species, but I've never been to a moose myself. Where's that located? Anyway, I don't think there's much of a difference between polar bear species anyway. <laughs> of course not. The time has come, Ben. Now that your disguise is complete, you can totally infiltrate the inner core of the bear community without a fear. What better way to begin than by trying to fraternize with that bear down there, fishing in the frozen river? Uh, yeah, why not? I've been observing that specimen for some time, and it may be a good contact to start with. It's a youthful cub whose growth isn't complete. Though, you can never trust them. They can rip your head off with one swipe of the claw. Well then, the moment of truth has arrived. Come on, buddy. I know you can do it. Here we go! A touch of ferocious bear essence will help, too.
No, I don't want to leave all my stuff scattered around. It belongs to Wazowski. Nope, I always bragged about being able to carry a bunch of items without needing a backpack or anything else. Mmm, better not. I don't want Wazowski to get upset with me. Yes, now that Wazowski is gone, I can do it without getting caught. I hope Wazowski doesn't notice. Oh, the disappointment. Who would have known that bear would get so grumpy? If I approached him any closer, he would have torn me to pieces. Listen, Ben. Well, what's on your mind? It seems like such a waste for you to keep on observing from afar, when you could be with that bear down there. Are you sure it isn't too risky, Brian? It, it looked like it wanted to disembowel me before. No, man. The thing is, he got scared because you were standing up. Now that you mention it, of course. He must have thought I wanted to fight, so he got angry. I'm sure there wouldn't be any problem if you got on all fours. You think so? Well, I'll try again. That's the spirit, Ben. My pod friend, here comes Benjamin Wazowski. Come on, buddy. I know you can do it. Here we go. A touch of ferocious bear essence will help, too. Something tells me Wazowski's gonna be a success this time. They vanished into the woods. Oh, the humanity, it was terrifying. Wazowski's face was like an open book, especially at the beginning, but then, I don't know how to describe it. Well, I hope he's happy in his new life. The important thing is that love conquered all. Yeah, I th think I can reach it. Let me see if I can. I'll return it to Wazowski if he shows up around here. Hey, good idea. I'll try to copy the bear. Let's see if I can do it as well as he does. The stick is so smooth and flat that as soon as I touched the salmon, it slipped off and swam away. Yeah, that looks like a good imitation bear claw. Quite promising. Look out, salmon, here I come. Okay, let's hope my idea works now. Unbelievable! I never would have imagined it to be so easy. Took some work, but I've got it at last. One perfect specimen of an Alaskan salmon.
I'll tell him what I've gotten. That way I can be sure he won't forget the deal we made. I brought you some of the things you asked for to make the sushi. Mind if I ask you something, Archibald? Are you ready? My questions are somewhat personal. Well, in that case, we could start playing our old game again. But backward. Every time you open your mouth, you give me another reason to feel sorry for your pathetic self and put an end to your sorry, meaningless existence. Considering the vegetative state of your brain, it would be a true act of euthanasia. Wait a sec. How much? Times with you seem to last as infinitely as your stupidity. They have no end. How can you hear a whistle that doesn't make any sound? Of course it makes sound. It's one thing for most human beings to be half deaf, and another thing for me to share all your flaws. I think we should talk about more important things, Archibald. I shudder to think what type of things are important to you. Um, I'd like to ask you about the ingredients I have to find for the sushi. Amazing. Your 80 kilos of weight have the same brain capacity as the 8 grams in a goldfish. So what is it you don't understand? Is there anything I should know about chopsticks? There are so many things you should know about, it's better you just stay the way you are. Happy, dumb, and obnoxious. All you need to know is they're made of wood. Getting back to what you were saying? Don't say another word. Your elephant-like memory has failed you again. A thousand dollars is a bit steep for a plate of sushi. I think it's only fair that you lower your price a bit. Whatever you say. But if we lower the price, it's only fair that we lower the quality too. So, in the end, I get less than a thousand bucks. Then you get a dish of sushi with no fish, no rice, and whatever I feel like sticking in. It depends on how well you can take another bottle in your face. Do you know Professor Simon? The best thing I can say about him is, I hardly know him. He doesn't bother me with nonsense, and he doesn't make a bunch of noise with a guitar. The guy is nice and quiet in his mansion. Doesn't bug anyone or show his face. Now that I think about it, I kinda like him. Thanks, Archibald. I'll be seeing ya. That's a true threat coming from you. That Archibald is a truly peculiar character. I think not. Even if I managed to find his house, he'd probably run me off the property. Let me try to go talk to him again. Do you mind if I ask you something, Archibald? Are you ready? Well, in that case, every time consider... Wait a sec. 
How much? Times with you seem to last as infinitely as your- Are you barefoot because- Is that what you think? Go figure that one- You know what- I'm not- I'm the- I noticed then a bit- But I don't- I'm used- I think we should- I sh- Thanks, Arch- That's a- to have fallen back. I'll have to shake him up a bit. Trantor's been destroyed by a huge meteor. No! Say it isn't true! Yeah, and the berries contain Trantonite, which took away your superpowers. Ryan, what you are saying is scientifically impossible. So stop making things up. While I am flattered that you think I have superpowers, you must be wrong. My superior smarts weren't created by any supernatural device. They're just due to the bubbling mix of supercharged genes that gave me an extra large brain. Now, I won't deny that Trento has sublimated my ripped metal muscles, but I've been a genius since I was a kid. Pretty cool stuff, huh? You know I built a rocket that pierced through the Earth's stratosphere when I was only eight? Well, it would have anyway, if it hadn't been for that fine feathered kamikaze. Stupid air rat. Sorry for freaking you out, but I needed you to pay attention. Now listen, I need you to remember that password. Password? What password? The one Alpha gave you to get into Professor Simon's house? What do you think? Well, how would I know? Hey, isn't it a bit chilly here for a- What do you mean, tropical? We're in a- Wait a second. What's the matter with you, Brian? You're acting like you have amnesia. Like I was saying, you need to eat some raw salmon to remember the password. Yuck! No wonder I can't remember. Is there no way to convince you? No, Brian. I am a civilized person. A decent Trato Japanese American. And I don't eat raw animals. You think I'm some sort of polar bear? Well, if you're Japanese, whatever, you must love sushi, right? Oh, hi, Brianson. Mackerel, tuna, halibut, octopus. It's almost the only gourmet food I enjoy, besides desserts. What about salmon? Do you dig salmon sushi? Well, if there's nothing else swimming around, yeah, I'll eat it with pleasure. By the way, did I mention I'm dying of starvation? I'll get you a salmon, or my name's not Brian. Don't you worry, you'll be getting ready for the most delicious plate of sushi you've ever had in a jiffy. Oh dear Brian, we geniuses don't cook. If nobody's around to make our meals, we just order out for pizza or bite our nails. But under no circumstances will we waste any time on something as mundane as cooking. Good lord, I have to get him to eat that sushi as soon as possible. I don't think I can take another conversation with him. That won't do any good. I bought it last week, but I haven't figured out how it all works yet. I bought it last week.
I'd prefer not to. If I try, it might come crashing down. It's not the most ideal tool, but if I cut it in just the right spot, maybe I could carve something resembling chopsticks. Well, it can't hurt to try. Look at that. I did a pretty good job. I'll tell him what I've gotten. That way I can be sure he won't forget the deal we made. Look, I brought everything you wanted to make the sushi. And I have the cash, too. Hmm. You mind if I ask you something, Archibald? Will you take long to prepare the sushi? Where will you leave it? How long is it going to take you to learn not to stick your nose into other people's work? It'll be ready when it's ready, mister. I doubt you'll understand, but let me try to explain. If you come here and the sushi's nowhere to be seen, then it's not ready. But if you come and see a plate of sushi, that means it's done. Did you comprehend that? Yeah, but if you leave it out here, some animal might come by and eat it. It might be safer if you leave it right in the shelter where my friend is waiting. Well, well. Mama's boy is requesting a delivery service. If that's what you want, call up Sisley and order a pizza. They're gross. You'll love them. I said please, Archibald. Take the sushi to the shelter for me. All right, but favors have a price. That'll cost you more. That's impossible. I gave you all I have. That's nice to know. Tonight I shall dine on sushi as I ask myself where the thousand dollars in my pocket came from. What more do you want? The clothes off my back? Kid, only one thing would gross me out more than wearing your disgusting oversized baby clothes, having to see you naked as you hand it over to me. I don't know what else I can give you. Let me think. If I'm not mistaken, you have a cell phone on you, right? Yeah, but it cost me a fortune. I was thinking I could resell it, but forget it. I'll take you the sushi in exchange for you leaving me alone and getting out of here for good. My sincere thanks, Archie. Archie? You have the balls to call me Archie? What do you think we are, relatives? Or do you think you have the right to insult my parents' good taste with your tacky nicknames? Sorry, Archie, I... Not again! You little... All right, give me the cell phone. The cell phone, or the deal's off. All right, if there's no other choice. At the shelter, okay? If I'd known you were trying to feed the village people's blind cousin, I'd be preparing, making the sushi with your eyeballs. And if you bug me again, kid, I'll make some with your family jewels. No, man. Uh, that won't be necessary. You'd make some great sausage, too. See you later. Good riddance, kid. Why, you... Oh! Come on, Joshua. 
your boy. Delicious. What's for dessert? Hey, what about that password? Yes. Yes, I remember. <laughs> Where are you going? Yahoo! Look at the mess this wacko got us into. Well, at least it stopped snowing. That's better than nothing. Maybe I should have kept my big mouth shut. That's one of those doohickeys they used to drag heavy things with. The cable is released, then pulled in by a small motor. I think it's called a winch. Hey, I could use it to tow Joshua to shore. I hope I can get it to work. I was afraid of this. The battery is dead. It won't work unless I get the pickup truck started first. Yeah, if I get the engine to start, the winch will work. We're in luck. The key is in the ignition. It won't start. I guess I was asking for a miracle. It's got gasoline for sure, and the battery light hasn't come on, so there must be something wrong with the engine. I'm not much of an auto mechanic, but it can't hurt to open up the hood and take a look-see. How weird. There's no sign of the rod used to hold up the hood. The hockey stick may be too long, but it could work. Though it would be better if I take off the bear claw first. Perfect. Now I can take a good look at the engine. I'm not very good at these things, but I'll take a look. One thing's for sure, it doesn't have any spark plugs. Yeah, I could use the knife as a screwdriver in order to remove the spark plug from the chainsaw. Presto, now I've got a spark plug. And a... Let's see if I can put it in right. Done, hopefully the engine will work now. Cross your fingers. Sweet! Let's hope the winch will work. Yes! Let's get this nightmare over with. Joshua, pay attention! 
happened? I've got to get that nutcase off the icy lake. Perfect, this is working. I'll get Joshua's monk outfit from the shelter. He should be wearing it when we go to Professor Simon's house. If they see him in his regular clothes, they won't let us in, even with the password. Here, Joshua. Well, here we go. The man who knows does not speak. The man who speaks doesn't know. Come in. Don't be afraid of the dogs. Come on, chop chop. What about those mutts? <laughs> those barking dogs? Just one of Simon's MP3s. And I thought I wouldn't live to tell the story, but I had a stroke of luck and managed to escape through the amoeba. My dear friend, You've displayed some exemplary courage by confronting Kordsmeyer. And as for you... My name is Joshua, and I'm starving! I see. Alpha spoke to me of you, the human who lives among Trantorians. You are quite lucky. My stomach's growling with hunger! As is mine, dear friend. Though it's the hunger for knowledge which makes us scientists. I think my legs are going to give out! Joshua, we're short on time, and I haven't even figured out what those Trantorians are doing here. You are new to the field, then. Please, take a seat. Trantor, an ancient and distinguished planet, more than 60 light eons from our own. Let me tell you, if you thought the walk up here was far... Its inhabitants had already dominated quantum technology, before the first single-celled bean sprouted to life on Earth. What he means is they already had some awesome wares running when our ancestors were riding in Stein. They learned to model the space-time continuum at their whim, to leap from galaxy to galaxy, to alight onto dimensional vortices in a purely tangential manner. In a word, their travel budget was out of this world. Their telepathic mastery is such that they could dispense with their mere physical presence, should that be their whim. Ooh, not even scullery thought of that! As you are aware, their civilization is beyond ours by an exponentially awe-inspiring amount. They do seem to be pretty quick. They could effortlessly make slaves of whole solar systems and shrink them infinitesimally with nothing but a thought. Their brains could fry our sorry bodies into a heap of atoms. Buckles the mind, huh? Yet all that seems to interest them is an intergalactic zoo. He means the only... a what? A zoo? Fascinating, is it not? They trek throughout the universe collecting animals and take them to a planet three times larger than Earth. An immense zoological collection where ecosystems from extremely distant galaxies and eras coexist. During the journey, they put the animal into an induced slumber which they refer to as the dream. Sounds like they've been keeping some info from me. Furthermore, they've been coming to Earth since the dawn of time. And though they actually need no one, they have made us all stakeholders in their enterprise. The truth is, I don't quite get it. A time came at which Earth's technological development made it difficult for Trantorians to go unnoticed. And therefore, they contacted our most eminent scientists to reach an agreement. We would protect them when visiting, conceal them from the public eye, and supply them with animals. In exchange, they would provide us with some of their knowledge and most advanced technology. What a deal! Yes, my friend. Don't you find it unbelievable that mankind has carried out the technological revolution of the 20th century with no help? Had Trantor failed to furnish us with knowledge, theories, and prototypes, we would never have gotten so far. Think of heretofore unconceivable vaccines, the space race, or even the vacuum tubes in the first computer. And you are thinking of Trantor. I knew that, and the first Jellyfield donut. They told me so. Astounding, isn't it? As I was saying, we trade animals for wisdom. 
The Earthling entity responsible for coordinating these efforts is the Contactors International Agency, of which I myself was a member until recently. Until Kordsmeyer appeared, I suppose. Precisely, during the dream of the platypus. We were waiting for the Trantorians in a cave in Cuba Petty, Australia, when the rocks in the ceiling started raining down on us. It looked like our days were numbered. Right at that moment, a Trantorian appeared through an amoeba point carrying a small sphere in his hand. The NG0, an antiparticle generator that reduces all sorts of matter to nothing. He raised it up and aimed it at the rocks, and they disappeared instantaneously, as if they'd never existed. Since then, Kordsmeyer has been awfully interested in the NG0. He even ordered me to ask the Trantorians for it. When I refused, he tried to have me eliminated. So I was forced to leave my position and flee to this dull hideout. Surrounded by safety measures with passwords known only by Alpha, Trantor's High Commissioner for Earthling Affairs, and now you, of course. So what we know is that Kordsmeyer has managed to get a Trantorian spaceship into trouble. At least enough for it to risk sending a message through Joshua. Whoops! With all this chit-chat, I forgot about the message! Yes, Simon! What is that? Let us join hands, and then you will see. Joshua put a lid on it! Man! Silence! Senior Onion, you can muster. 
Grace. Professor Simon, are you okay? Just give me a minute or two. I need to warm up. Aren't you hungry too? Holy smokes! We have to keep the Trantorians from giving the NG-0 to Kordsmeyer for sure. In the wrong hands, that weapon could destroy a city the size of Los Angeles in tenths of a second. Dear friends, we must travel to Palenque to find the Trantonite immediately. Or we can begin to say farewell to the world as we know it. You can count on me, Professor. And on Joshua, of course. I bet you're just real hungry, Professor Simon. Hey! Why don't we call that sushi guy? Good thinking. May I use your phone? It isn't a safe way to communicate, given the circumstances. Do you mind if I ask why? I know of a friend who could help us out. Someone we fully trust. Magnificent. Then I recommend you sit at my laptop computer and use the impenetrable ultra-safe crypto chat. Provided that your friend is online at this very moment, that is. Don't worry. If there were one person online in the whole world, It'd be Sushi Douglas. Well, I am clueless about the online chatting. Of course, since Tranto is all about telepathic talk. Hey, Sushi, are you there? Do you mean that the Trantorians don't have the internet? How do you think Alpha informs us of trading dates, if not by email? In fact, after reading their email, we type in www.planet-trantor.com and we enter our code so that they will provide us with the details of the transaction. I'm totally out of the loop! Nobody told me about any of this! You leave me in awe, my dear friend. If not, where do you believe the network of all networks was designed? In the mind of a simple human? No, it was them who showed us how to build it and use it. What I've never understood is how they get online from other solar systems. I don't know. Perhaps they use neutrino transducers, like in that splendid novel by William Garza. Have you got that one? That book must have gotten at least five stars. You wouldn't happen to have anything by Sarah Martin, would you? Nathan? What's up, doll? Think you'll ever find our little pest? Hush, hush, soldier boy. My spider web is about to strangle both him and the monk. And it looks like we got three for the price of two. Your old pal Simon's here. Simon? Ha! I knew I'd end up catching him, overeducated scientist. Anyway, make him vanish and come to Mala Pronto, lady. Have you already gotten the real Pignon to cooperate? I know how to make up his mind. The clock's ticking before the big event. K. Dick, all of Asimov, and of course, Brian Scullery's complete works. Yeah. What are you doing with that gossipy pop in your library? Allow me to tell you a secret. If you tug on the third volume of his infamous UFO Lies and the Houdini Legacy, you'll see something open up before your feet. A at Simon's house. And that's where my story ends, for now. Sounds like quite an adventure, but you can count on me. What do you want me to do? Think about it, shrimp. While you pull the trigger, I'll stick my finger up the barrel. My fingers get blown off, but the force of the opposite reaction will make the bullet shoot backwards. At a speed nine times faster, it'll blow up the gun and your face will get erased. Seriously? I knew you were an idiot. I'm gonna kill him! No one ordered you to do it, Thirteen. They're not paying you for this one. It's the ones inside they want. Well, get a move on before my Christmas shopping begins. Did that spy from Hawaii turn up yet? Not yet, Tarantula. This is getting a bit tiresome. They've been in there for hours. All right. 18. Finish off the other two. Then we'll go in and get the spy. Which one should I take out first? The clown? No. The old geezer is more important. for Houdini's legacy Joshua Brian go after him what about you I'll be fine everything depends on you now run but jump for Pete's sake find that stone find it <laughs> Brian? 
Are you there? Brian? Something's wrong. We have to leave immediately. Saturn, we're going on a trip. Brian's in trouble. BB in trouble? Give me five minutes. You're not leaving me here, are you, man? And bring your best equipment. We may need it. Four minutes! I'll go grab some equipment too, but the good stuff. You're gonna fly when you see it, man. 